Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, a lot of fire coverage, especially locally. A massive fire burning in North Bear County. We have the very latest. And firefighters in California had their hands full with a pair of massive fires over the weekend as well. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. And a live look out at the Alamo City, 63 degrees now. What is the rest of the day? What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. But first, we're tossing to Jonathan Cotto. And we want to begin with some late breaking news near news near the downtown area. We're getting reports of a fire. All right, so this is unfolding right now. Uh, Jonathan Cotto joining us live from the scene near Calabra Road on Colorado Street. So Jonathan, what have you been able to learn? Good morning, Max. I'm here on the corner of Colorado and Lombardo, about a block away from I-10. The scene is starting to clear here, but we do know San Antonio Fire Department were called out about 3.30 this morning. Multiple buildings here on fire right now. They're telling us the, the buildings that you see here on your screen were used for storage, so there was heavy damage inside. They weren't met with any challenges, uh, but they say that they arrived here to a fully engulfed the structure. Uh, something that they worked on was just preventing those flames from spreading to the houses that are behind these buildings. But right now, this fire has been put out. Uh, arson was not called out to the scene. And of course, um, they are now all clearing, clearing the area. Reporting live from the city's west side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Evacuations are in effect as a massive brush fire continues to tear through the demolition range area on JBSA Campolis. So according to Joint Base San Antonio officials, the fire has spanned an estimated 4,000 acres. And as of 5 a.m. this morning, it is only 40% contained. Now, we know it initially started around 2.30 yesterday. Officials tell us it was sparked on a training range. Residents north of Campolis on the Comal County side and in the Oak Ridge and George Oaks neighborhoods are under a mandatory evacuation order as fire crews continue to battle these flames. Now we're obviously going to have continued coverage on the story throughout the morning, both here on GMSA and on KSAT.com. All right, we're going to get to that story and throughout the newscast, but for now, good morning. 6.02 this morning, April 10th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Happy Palm Sunday. I can't believe uh, Easter is just around the corner next uh, weekend. No. I feel like it's been so many things with Fiesta. You kind of forget where you are in the month. And last night, I would say the Flambeau Parade was a success. Oh, yeah, Sarah Spivey. Did you make it out there? Uh, no, I want to start with the fire that's going on across parts of northern uh, Bear County, Camp Bullis area. One thing that's going to be working in favor for the firefighters today is that the humidity is higher. Dew points are in the upper 50s, so that is quite the improvement uh, from yesterday when we were seeing dew points in the 30s. So that's one thing that's working in favor for those firefighters around Camp Bullis. But something to keep in mind is that the winds are going Going to be high today. So that Camp Bullis fire is 40% contained and much like yesterday, there is likely going to be a smoke plume associated with that fire. Now, because winds are from the south, it's areas just to the north of that fire that will be directly impacted by the smoke plume uh, from areas uh, in southern Comal County, right near that Bear County line up to Bergheim and into Kendall County near Candelia. That's right around lunch. And again, winds are going to stay from the south southeast. So so it looks like we're going to have that smoke plume move into areas of eastern Kendall County as well. So the smoke will blow away from San Antonio, but they're still going to be visible all across Bear County and especially on the northern part of Bear County. The smoke plume will dissipate slightly, but still affect parts of Kendall County later tonight. This is likely going to be another common uh, site out there today. The giant fire visible all across San Antonio, but again, most of the smoke will be blowing north of the city. Otherwise, it's going to be a hot day. Temperatures are going to climb to near 90 degrees this afternoon. 90 in San Antonio. It'll be even hotter out to the west. 95 in Sabinal, 94 in Hondo. We have seen wildfires all across the state of Texas as drought conditions are worsening. We could really use some rain, and even though we have a chance for some isolated storms in the week ahead, isolated is the key word there. So I'm going to talk about that chance for rain, and of course, I'll show you that uh, smoke plume forecast again coming up in a bit. Max and Sarah. 
Thank you, Sarah. Other top stories we are following this morning. A man in critical condition after being shot in the face during a fight outside a northwest side bar. So this happened just before 3 a.m. yesterday on Babcock near Eckert and Wurzbach Road. That's where police say they found a 36 year old man who was in a truck headed towards the hospital. Officials followed the truck. The man eventually taken to Bamsey. Uh, witnesses tell police the shooting suspect drove off before they arrived. Still, no arrests have been made. And headed to Virginia, one man dead after police say he crashed his vehicle in front of a popular bar Friday night. Officers there say they clocked the man driving at more than 100 miles per hour right before the crash. The 28 year old driver died at the scene. Two pedestrians hit by flying debris. Three Virginia Beach officers suffered smoke inhalation trying to rescue the driver. No other injuries reported. The sports world continues to mourn the death of Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Dwayne Haskins after he was hit by a dump truck in southern Florida. Fans paid their respect to the former Buckeye at a memorial at the Ohio State campus. His former teams, the Steelers and Commanders, released statements extending their condolences. Haskins was a first-round draft choice back in 2019 and went 2-5 and five as a rookie. He was only 24 years old. Now to the war in Eastern Europe, where Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky thanking several people and thanking organizations for a global fundraising event that raised more than 10 billion euros for Ukrainians who have had to leave their homes. This as Zelensky repeats his call for a complete embargo on Russian oil and gas, which he called the sources of Moscow's self-confidence and impunity. ABC's Karina Mitchell explains. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is thanking the organizers of the Stand Up for Ukraine global pledging event. The effort raised more than $10 billion for Ukrainians who were forced to flee their homes. During his address to Ukraine Saturday night, Zelensky said he spoke with British Prime Minister Boris Johnson about possible new sanctions on Russia. Earlier, Johnson walked through Kyiv with Zelensky during an unannounced visit. In the last few weeks, the world has found new heroes, and those heroes are the people of Ukraine. Ahead of an expected major Russian offensive in the east, the Kremlin has announced the leader of Russia's brutal campaign in Syria is taking command of the next phase of this war. And as Russian troops head east, there is mounting evidence of their brutal tactics. In Bordyanka, more than 200 people are still missing and presumed dead. Anna is searching for her mother, but it's not clear if she made it out. We were sending them a route from, from Borodyanka to Kyiv, how they can escape. In nearby Makariv, the bodies of 132 people were discovered. Ukrainian officials say they were tortured and murdered. And in Bucha, authorities are exhuming the mass graves, 67 bodies from this site alone. The whole world is mourning with the people of Bucha. Some people have begun returning to their devastated city. Bucha resident Valerie Lysenko. This just breaks my heart. I'm optimist, so I'm sure we'll rebuild this city and uh, we'll make it even more beautiful than before. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, Amazon is calling for a do-over election at a New York warehouse one week after Amazon employees at that location voted to form a union. So in its filing to the National Labor Relations Board, Amazon says there were numerous actions that quote-unquote improperly suppressed and influenced the vote. If it stands, the vote to unionize the Staten Island location will be the first Amazon location to form a union. The count shows that more than 2,600 votes were in favor of a union, over 2,100 against it. The grassroots labor group, Amazon Labor Group, has not responded to the company's allegations. And sad news out of West Texas, where the tiny Bucky's display is no more. Uh. I know. That's according to Texas Monthly. The art installment sparked excitement on social media a week ago when it popped up. I saw a bunch of people going to take pictures over there. Despite the bright yellow beaver logo and the little brick building, it isn't actually a Bucky's gas station at all. It's an <laughs> art display, of course. So the artist who has chosen to remain anonymous told Texas Monthly, Quote, I assume the shift to e-commerce and higher gas prices probably forced it to close, end quote. And that's outside of Marathon near the Marfa area. Uh, do you end up going to check it out? No. No, me neither. It's really, it's a drive. Yeah, it's maybe a drive. next time. <laughs> yeah. Time now, just about 610, 62 degrees out.
Go Spurs, go! All right, Silver and Black have a date with the Mavs tonight. We have a preview and what happened last night in just a bit. And hundreds of athletes are competing here in San Antonio this weekend. We'll have the details after the break. And a quick live look throughout the Alamo City. Like we've been saying, we are covering the big fire in the north part of Bear County. We're going to keep you updated throughout the morning. Check in with Sarah Spivey. Well, roughly 250 athletes with physical disabilities and visual impairments from different states are competing here in San Antonio this weekend. It is a huge deal. The Texas Regional brings together athletes to compete in sports like tennis, cycling, track and field, archery, as you just saw there, several different venues, including Morgan's Wonderland. Very cool. The scale of competition is impressive. Only 10 to 15 of these multi-sport competitions are held across the U.S., while the number is small, it has a huge impact on the athletes' lives. Having a disability doesn't limit you the way that I think a lot of people assume when you see someone in a wheelchair. Um, it raises equity, awareness. There's so many good things that come out of it. Now, some of the athletes at the Games preparing to qualify for the 2022 UIL State Track and Field Championships. Others hoping to qualify for, get this, the Paralympics. It's amazing. The Games continue today with awards wrapping up at 3 p.m. Good luck to all of our athletes, especially those visiting here and enjoying San Antonio. Oh, yeah. And yesterday, Sarah Spivey, it seemed like a perfect day to be out and about to do it. Yeah, it was warm yesterday. You know, we got up into the 80s today. We're going to get close to 90 degrees today, guys. So it is going to be a warm day. And it's noticeably warmer outside this morning, too. You know, the last couple of mornings, we've been dealing with temperatures in the 40s. But now it's 63 degrees. And there is a bit of a breeze. Winds from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. Take a look at temperatures elsewhere. Again, some uh, 10 to 15 degrees warmer than how we started of the day yesterday. It's 58 in Kerrville, 57 in Yavaldi, 65 in Del Rio, 68 in Catula, and 68 in Kennedy. Let's take a closer view here around San Antonio, 63 in New Braunfels, 63 in Converse, 61 in Castroville, 53 in Rio Medina, 57 in Bernie, and 57 in Comfort. Uh, now today we are going to continue to see windy conditions. We're going to have wind gusts from the south up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. And in spite of the fact that it's a little bit more humid outside, today. Those winds are not going to be great for the fire that's going on in Camp Bullis. As of 5 a.m., 40 percent contained, but we'll continue to get information for you. It's going to be visible. The fire is going to be visible from San Antonio, but the smoke plume is going to directly impact areas right to the north of the fire and slightly to the west as well. So areas like Guadalupe River State uh, Park are going to be impacted by the smoke plume up to Bergheim and Candelia. By by the later afternoon, we'll start to see that smoke plume move more into uh, Kendall County, closer to Sisterdale, and eventually by the later evening hours, affecting areas as far north as Fredericksburg. But otherwise, it's going to be a warm, partly cloudy day. A few more clouds in the afternoon than what we've seen over the last few days, but still hot. Temperatures are going to climb to near 90 around San Antonio and New Braunfels, 88 in Kerrville, and further to the west, it'll be closer closer to 100 degrees this afternoon for areas closer to the border. But for your KSAT 12 hour forecast, we'll be at 66 by 9. We'll already be in the 70s by 10. And around lunch, we're going to be looking at temperatures in the 80s. So it's going to be warm around lunchtime if you're going to be doing Sunday brunch. Or if you're heading out to church for Palm Sunday, by the time church ends, it's going to be a warm one. Uh, south winds at about 10 to 15 miles per hour sustained. But again, gusts of up to 25 to uh, 30 and then in the later afternoon that's when we'll see our high temperature of 90 degrees 4 5 p.m. with some partly cloudy skies as well. It's going to be a very mild evening now. Before the break, I talked about how we do have chances for storms in the forecast tomorrow and Tuesday, but notice how low those chances are. Storms are going to be isolated in nature, but if a storm pops up, it would become severe. So we're going to be watching that very carefully. Odds are in favor of you not getting any rain, but if you do, some of those storms could be stronger, severe Monday and Tuesday. And when I say it, this is not going to be a drought buster, this is what I mean. Even if you get rain, less than a quarter of an inch of rain is likely and that is just not going to cut it. And as you can see, better rain chances to the north and east of San Antonio.
So we'll be watching carefully for that possibility for severe storms both Monday and Tuesday, but the chances for storms themselves are low. They'll be isolated in nature. Otherwise, it's going to be windy and hot this Palm Sunday near 90 degrees. We'll be near 90 for a good portion of the week. And then by Thursday and Friday, our temperatures will drop down into the mid 80s. All in all, it's going to be very warm this week and we're just not going to get that much needed rain. We're going to keep you updated on uh, that grass fire across parts of Camp Bullis uh, throughout the morning. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 618, 62 degrees out. All right, Max, what is happening with the Spurs? Okay, so we're, we're dealing with some injuries, dealing with some illness, mm -hmm. and you know, it's the last regular home season, home game of the season. So we're gonna have all the highlights. That guy right there, Lonnie Walker, put on a show. We're gonna tell you about it and what comes next. Good morning, welcome back and go Spurs go. Fan appreciation night at the AT&T Center. Spurs hosting Warriors. So let's jump into the highlights. First quarter, there we go. Daps and hugs, it must be love. Josh Primo, but we're talking Josh Richardson. Step back three, Spurs lead 10-4. Later, we have liftoff. Look at that. Cocked it all the way back. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, creating his own shot. Slam dunk. Spurs regain a lead. 19-18, closing seconds. Walker shoots, misses. Devante slamming it back home. Spurs trail just by two after one second frame. Warriors, Jonathan Kaminga, perfect pass. Gary Payton, the second layup. Dubs lead 43-34. Golden State outscoring the Spurs by eight in the second. They led 54-44 at half. So. We go to the second half. Early third quarter, Spurs down 15. Jones driving baseline, avoiding Draymond Green. Reverse layup. That's pretty sweet. Spurs first points in the quarter, closing seconds. 19-year-old Josh Primo, huge three, beating the buzzer. Spurs, they're down seven at this point, entering the fourth. They trailed as many as 17 points. Fourth quarter, two up Josh Primo again. Good five-point game then of a Draymond Green turnover. Big pass. Who is it? It's Primo for the layup. Spurs down two, 88-86. San Antonio fighting hard down the stretch. They come up just a little bit short. The final from the AT&T Center, Warriors 100, Spurs 94. And with the loss, Silver and Black are officially the 10 seed in the West. I think we're down two, and what, two minutes left, a minute left, you know. Um, and it was great to see uh, Primo do his thing with, the, with his confidence, making tough shots, getting to the lane. It's about the experience, and um, I think this game specifically was one of those moments that you can learn a lot from it. I've been so high on this team for so long. They're young, they're exciting, they run. So the Spurs back in action tonight, closing out the regular season on a high note, taking on the Dallas Mavericks. And then coming up in our next half hour, we're going to preview, give you a full preview of the I-35 rivalry. So do we know what seed they're going to 10? 10 seed. Are they locked in at 10? Pretty locked in at 10. Okay. Uh, hey, so we're there. We're there. We're, we're in the postseason. There. there we go. Not in the playoffs yet, but we're in the postseason. Okay. Time now, just about 624, 62 degrees out. And still to come on GMSA, a puppy that just had major heart surgery needs a forever home. We'll tell you where you can adopt her. So after a life-saving surgery, heart surgery, a five-month-old terrier puppy is getting a second chance at life. All right, so we want to introduce you to Miley. No. She was rescued in South Padre, brought to the San Antonio Humane Society back in January. There, it was discovered that Miley had a severe heart murmur. So a complex heart surgery was performed on March 24th, and it was a complete success, and now she's ready for her new forever home. So if you're interested in giving Miley a loving new home, we have all the adoption information right now. Just head to ksat.com. You can add a, a pup, make it number three. No, I, I, I would love to. <laughs> I, it's just too much, but hey, sh shout out to the Humane Society. Mm -hmm. They had that new complex, newish, last yeah. two years, and then you can see all the surgeries being performed in there. They do an amazing job. Absolutely. So if you're interested, bring Miley home, ksat.com. Time now, 628, 62 degrees out. Oh, much more to come on GMSA, including Oof. coverage of that fire burning in North Bear County at Camp Bullis. Love we'll the very latest. 
Good morning and welcome back. Happy Sunday, 631 this morning, April 10th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get right to Sarah Spivey, who has got an update on that Camp Bullis fire. I know, Sarah, it's a very serious situation out there. Absolutely. And you know, uh, Sarah and Max, this was a site that many were familiar with yesterday. Uh, across San Antonio, that fire was visible. This is a picture sent in through our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app yesterday from Timberwood Park, looking west toward the fire. And you can see that the smoke is blowing to the north there, and that's going to be a similar situation today because winds are going to be from the south. The smoke is going to blow from this fire up to the north. Uh, latest update says that the fire is 40% contained, and here's a look at that smoke plume forecast. You can see the smoke blowing north into Comal and Kendall counties uh, later on today up from uh, near the Guadalupe River State Park to Bergheim and Candelia. And then it'll move more into uh, Kendall County throughout the day and into the afternoon. The smoke plume will directly affect those just to the north of the fire in Comal and Kendall counties today, even as far north uh, as as Gillespie County and Fredericksburg. Outside right now, though, in San Antonio, uh, we are looking at temperatures in the 60s, southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour, and dew points are actually quite a bit higher than they were this time yesterday. Dew points are in the 50s, and that's going to work to the firefighters' advantage, not dealing with the dry of conditions. Now, it's still going to be windy today, so that's not good, but the dew points are higher, and they're higher by some 20, 25 degrees so you can notice a little bit more humidity out in the air today otherwise it's going to be a hot one temperatures are going to climb to near 90 in san antonio 90 in new Braunfels, and even hotter out to the west we could desperately use some rain and unfortunately our rain chances this week are very low but if a storm does develop it could become severe so i've got those details for you coming up in just a few minutes max and sarah you have more information about that fire we do. Thank you, Sarah. Evacuations are in effect as a massive brush fire continues to tear through the demolition range area of JBSA Camp Bullis, like Spivey was just talking about. That's right. And the latest information from JBSA saying it has spanned more than 4,000 acres. And like Sarah said, 40% contained out of, as of 5 a.m. So we know it initially started around 2.30 yesterday and ignited on a training range. Residents north of Camp Bullis on the Comal County side and in the Oak Ridge and George Oaks neighborhoods are under a mandatory evacuation order as fire crews continue to battle those flames. Now we're obviously going to have continued coverage on the story both here on GMSA and KSAT.com, so make sure to stay with us throughout the day as more information becomes available. San Antonio police are investigating after a man was hit and killed by a pickup truck on the city's northwest side. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified him as 64-year-old Ricky Ward. The crash happened on Dezavala Road near Vance Jackson Road on I-10. That's where police say Ward was walking in a crosswalk when a pickup truck made a left turn and hit him. Police are trying to determine who had the right of way. As of now, the pickup driver is not facing any charges. And San Antonio police still searching for the person responsible for shooting at three people. Now, one of those people shot and killed. Now, this was the scene yesterday where police found 75 shell casings. It happened Friday morning on Belmont Place near East Commerce and South New Braunfels Avenue. Now, I say yesterday morning, that's because it has been an ongoing investigation. When police arrived, they found the first victim dead in the driver's seat of a running vehicle. He's now been identified as 66-year-old Clarence Jones. Next to him was another woman shot multiple times. She was taken to Bamsey and a third victim walking nearby with a gunshot wound to their hip. A woman is being charged with murder for what deputies describe as a self-induced abortion. 26-year-old Lizelle Herrera is in the Star County Jail on a $500,000 bond. Star County deputies say Herrera, quote, intentionally and knowingly caused the death of an individual by a self-induced abortion. However, deputies did not make it clear whether she had the abortion or helped someone else with one. Deputies also didn't know, didn't, didn't not say under what law Edetta has been charged. Last year, Governor Greg Abbott signed a law that bans abortions for women who are as early as six weeks pregnant. The law also allows for private citizens to sue doctors or anyone who helps a woman get an abortion. 
Well, we've been covering fires here, but there's a lot going on around the country in San Jose. Firefighters having their hands full with a massive five alarm fire yesterday. This is a Home Depot. Take a look at this video. The smoke so intense it could have been seen from miles away and nearby pet hospital had to be evacuated. Still no word yet on what caused the fire, but home improvement store obviously packed with a lot of wood, a lot of paint, a lot of flammable items. So at this time, though, luckily no injuries reported. Going out to another massive fire in California, this one at the port of Benica that broke out yesterday afternoon. Luckily, the winds blew the fire away from other nearby structures. Crews were able to douse the flames using a fireboat. Well, today is Palm Sunday and Pope Francis holding mass for the first time since the pandemic in St. Peter's Square. The square filled with mass goers and as is custom for the Palm Sunday, Whoa, decorated with giant palm plants, other greenery extending towards a platform where the main altar was located. Uh, alive, more people, and then everybody's just enjoying it. It's awesome. The kids are loving it as well. All right, lots of people out last night enjoying the Fiesta Flambeau Parade. It's a parade that's been absent for two years, of course, because of the pandemic. So the excitement for its return, you can see it right there, was felt by both Fiesta veterans and Fiesta newcomers. And right now on our website, we've got you covered for all things Fiesta. Just look over the Fiesta tab on KSAT.com. Of course, we also have those pictures and videos from the excitement last night. And speaking of Fiesta, we know it is back seemingly bigger than ever. We've seen the huge crowds fill Niosa. We've seen the full parades and of course, all the medals. So, how has everything gone so far from the Fiesta Commission's perspective? Well, this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Steve Rosenauer, Executive Director of the Fiesta Commission, joins us live. We're going to be talking about what preparations looked like this year, changes that we've seen, reactions, and how this party with a purpose means so much to the Alamo City. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Join us tomorrow for all the answers. Join us today for all the answers at 8 a.m. And I got to say, yesterday, we had the Pooch Parade, Jonathan Coto there live. Yes, that was awesome. Cute. Shout out to the uh, the pet owner with the Mandalorian costume. They won. And then um, King William Parade was awesome. It was a success. Yeah, so Alicia RJ and RJ. And Alicia out there. Um, and also I watched the Flambeau Parade nice. from, from home last night. Yep. <laughs> and it, it just, I was, I was having major FOMO that I wasn't yeah. there. It looked amazing. It really did. All right, time now. Just about 639, 62 degrees out. Baseball is back, Max. All right, we had the Rangers and the Astros both in action yesterday. We have all you need to know. And we all know that exercise is a healthy habit, but did you know there could be some serious consequences that come from working out incorrectly? We'll explain right after the break. Tearing my ACL. <laughs> all right, Achilles, wow. Yeah, There's a lot too. going on this morning, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so 6.39 this morning, 62 degrees. We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Yeah, please don't tear an ACL no. after a ruptured Achilles. Oh my goodness, <laughs> my nightmare. Awful. Introducing your 2022 Fiesta Royalty, powered by Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Bart Simpson, King Antonio 99, Viva Fiesta! Meet this year's Texas Cavaliers reigning King Antonio. Bart is a proud Cavalier. He's even more proud of the work that the Cavaliers do to help San Antonio charities. All that I am is King Antonio. The love that I receive is just a reflection of the work that all the Cavaliers do. So it's really not, uh, it's really being King Antonio is not about me. Uh, it's about the work of the Cavaliers. To date, the Texas Cavaliers Charitable Foundation has given $12 million to local charities. But with hardship the world went through these past couple of years, the Cavaliers feel giving is more important now than ever. But we know that the most important time to give is when it's hard to give. When everybody's struggling, we just buckled down and figured out how to do it. Uh, so, so through COVID, we continue to give because uh, some couldn't, and, and that's, uh, it's important for San Antonio and our charities to have that help. Along with honoring the fallen heroes of the Alamo, the Cavaliers also honored the service men and women of the military. And for this year's King Antonio, that has an extra meaning. I'm from a Gold Star family. Uh, my father uh, was killed in Vietnam and I was adopted by another military man who raised me. So I'll tell you, it's very meaningful to me. And his favorite Fiesta event? Well, there's really no surprise. The River Parade is what I'm gonna say and I mean it. 
But I will tell you, it's the whole, it, 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 it's a fiesta as a whole. It's a blending of our cultures. Like I said before, that, that makes San Antonio such a unique place to live. You know, if we were all the same, it'd be a pretty boring place. And we come together and we celebrate each other's culture. And that's what the Cavaliers do. So we all know there are plenty of benefits that come from regular exercise. But there are some mistakes that can sabotage a well-intentioned workout. And these sabotages can actually shorten your lifespan. Ooh, David Sears gives us the details. Do you like to exercise outdoors or indoors? It depends on the day, how I'm feeling really. I do CrossFit and it's an indoor gym. I like to exercise indoors because the fans indoors. <laughs> Studies show people who exercise outdoors have more energy and less depression, anger, and tension than those who exercise indoors. But if you are exercising outside, be careful of the air quality. A study published in the journal Cardiovascular Research found smog shortens lifespan by an average of three years. And air pollution is linked to 43% of cardiovascular premature deaths. Too much regular strenuous activity can also shorten your lifespan. A Swedish study found performing high-intensity interval training or HIIT workouts too often can hinder mitochondrial functioning and increase insulin resistance. Mitochondrial dysfunction is linked to heart disease, to Alzheimer's disease, to cognitive impairments, to almost every condition possible. And worrying about exercise can actually shorten your life. A study at Stanford University found people who thought they were less active than others their age were more likely to die regardless of health status and BMI. Another exercise mistake that may shorten your life is focusing on strength instead of power. It may seem like the same thing, but strength focuses on how much you can lift, while power accounts for both speed and force. Researchers say muscle power is more important for longevity than muscle strength. For example, rising up from a chair at an old age deals more with muscle power. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. I think the moral of the story here is, is just enjoy your life. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, just, to, just to be clear, I don't want people to watch that and be like, no, I'm, I'm good just opening a bag of Doritos and sitting on the couch. You should yeah, still like, all, go for a walk. It's balance. Yeah. Balance. <laughs> balance is a great, great word. And, you know, today we're going to be really warm this afternoon, guys, and that smoke will be visible from the Camp uh, Bullis fire for most of San Antonio. So let's talk about a few things who will be most impacted by the smoke and how warm it's going to get here today in San Antonio. It's 63 degrees at the airport and winds are from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. Now, the humidity is higher than it was yesterday, and so that is good good news for the firefighters fighting that fire. It's also noticeably warmer outside this morning than yesterday. Yesterday we started off in the 40s and right now we're in the 60s. 63 degrees in San Antonio, 63 in New Braunfels, 64 in Pleasanton, 65 in Del Rio. It's 57 in Yavalli and 56 in Hondo. A closer view here at 64 at Stinson, 63 uh, in New Braunfels, 64 in Canyon Lake, 58 in Comfort, 57 in Kerrville, 57 in Bandera and 61 in Castroville. Now I mentioned that the humidity is higher. That's good for uh, fighting those fires, but unfortunately the winds are going to stay windy today. Winds are going to be from the south throughout the day, gusting up to 25 to even 30 miles per hour. So that's not great news. Uh, but as of now, that Campbell's fire is 40% contained. Here's where that smoke plume is going to be heading today for areas just to the north of the fire in Comal and County and in Kendall County and even uh, into parts of central Kendall County as we head into the day today. But mainly those directly living north of that fire will be impacted by the smoke. That does include Guadalupe River State Park and then even tonight as far north as uh, parts of Gillespie County that could see some impacts from the, that smoke. Otherwise, it's going to be visible in San Antonio, but the smoke will blow away from the city. Looking at the future future cast. We are going to have a few more clouds this afternoon, partly cloudy skies, and it's going to be a hot one. Temperatures are going to climb to near 90 degrees this afternoon. It will be, however, 88 in Bilverde, 89 in Converse, 90 in New Braunfels, 89 in Seguin. Notice that it's hotter off to the west, 95 in Sabinal, 94 in Hondo, 94 in Poteet. So looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast this Palm Sunday, we're going to be already in the 70s by 10 south winds at 15 miles per hour. And then as we head 
but into the afternoon we're going to get really warm. We'll be near 80 degrees already by lunch and into the later part of the afternoon and early evening hours will be near 90 degrees. South winds today sustained at 15 but gusting up to 25 to 30. Rain chances this week are very low. OK, only isolated showers and storms are possible on Monday and Tuesday, but this is a conditional forecast, meaning that if a storm develops, it will likely become severe. So even though the chance for rain in your backyard is low, if a storm happens, it will become severe. So we're going to be monitoring that carefully both tomorrow and especially on Tuesday. But either way, this is not going to help us out as far as the drought is concerned. If you do get a storm that you're going to be a lucky one, but otherwise temperatures uh, are going to be near 90 degrees and we're going to have very little chance for rain with uh, maybe less than a tenth of an inch of rain possible around San Antonio. So again, not a good chance for showers and storms, but if a shower and storm develops, it will become severe. Otherwise, it'll be hot today near 90 degrees near 90 for throughout the week. One exception to that is by the latter half of the week and into Good Friday, our highs will only be in the mid 80s. So guys, not a great chance for rain, extreme drought all across South Central Texas. And the, one of the reasons why these wildfires have been developing is because of the drought conditions out there, guys. We could desperately use some rain. Doesn't look good over the next seven days. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Time now, 6.50, 62 degrees out. All right, coming up after the break, more Spurs coverage. We have a big game tonight. Not many implications, but it should be a good one. I-35 matchup, taking on Luca and the Mavs. All right, let's take a look outside with Trans Guide. Looking good this morning. I know there was a lot of traffic last night between the Spurs game. There oh, was yeah. a boxing of an Alamo Dome, of course, yep. the Flambeau Parade, but all of those roads are back open. Please stay safe out there this morning, especially those heading out to church for Palm Sunday. Welcome back and go Spurs go silver and black dropping a close one here at home the last home game of the season losing the Warriors but silver and black have a chance to finish the regular season on a high note taking on the I-35 arrivals the Dallas Mavs tip off set for 830 this evening and Mavs superstar Luka Doncic is eligible to play against the Spurs this after the NBA rescinded the technical foul called against him in the Mavs blowout win against Portland on Friday. At the time, that was Luka's 16th technical foul this season, and after 16, that triggers an automatic one-game suspension. But they rescinded it, so Luka is good to go, and it could determine whether the Mavs are the three-seed or the four-seed in the Western Conference. As for the Spurs, with the loss to Golden State, the Spurs are officially the 10 seed in the West, and their play-in bracket is set. San Antonio will take on the New Orleans Pelicans in New Orleans on Wednesday night at 8.30. The winner of that game will advance into the tournament. The loser goes home and starts the offseason. All right, baseball is back. Time to play ball. Texas at Toronto yesterday afternoon, top of the third. Nathaniel Lowe hitting an RBI single to left, scoring, giving the Rangers a 3-2 lead. One of nine hits for Texas, but the Blue Jays come back to win 4-3 and will go for the three-game sweep later this afternoon. Meanwhile, Astros taking on the Angels. Houston's Justin Verlander making his first regular season start in 624 days, but the Astros just couldn't get it done. The final here, Angels 2, Houston nothing. Mm. So much going on. I know. All right. Time now, 6.55, 62 degrees out. All right. After the break, Sarah Spivey will have a final check of the forecast. And today's uh, smoke plume forecast will affect areas directly to the north of the Camp Bullis fire. So at the extreme northern section of Bear County into Comal County and up into Kendall County, those are the areas that are going to be most affected by the smoke plume. Otherwise, the fire will likely be visible from San Antonio, but we won't be seeing smoke in the city. It's going to be a hot day today. Temperatures are going to be in the 70s by 10, 80s by noon, and in the afternoon, 90 90 degrees for the high temperature. South winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour. So windy, but a little bit more humid today. We'll be watching carefully tomorrow because isolated, isolated storms could develop. They could be uh, come severe if they do develop, but the keyword there is isolated. So not everyone is going to be seeing storms, but it is a possibility tomorrow and Tuesday. Otherwise, it's going to be a pretty hot week. Temperature is going to be near 90 degrees for most of the week, mid 80s for the latter half of the week.
Thank you, Sarah. And coming up at 8 a.m., of course, we're going to have more coverage on that ongoing Camp Bullis fire. Our Jonathan Cotto will be live there this morning. And we also have leading essay. That's right. So we have the executive director of the Fiesta Commission joining us. We're going to talk about the changes we saw this year, how you prepare for all of this in the midst of the pandemic, and then what it's looked like from their perspective. So we we'll see you back here at 8 a.m. Happy Palm Sunday. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Well, good morning. I've got an updated look at which areas will be most impacted by the smoke plume from the Camp Bullis fire in just a few minutes. And speaking of that fire, we know multiple fire agencies banding together, trying to do what they can, trying to contain all that they can at Camp Bullis. We're going to have the latest on their efforts. And Jonathan Cotto joining us live from the area. And after the two-year hi hiatus, San Antonio turns out in full force for Fiesta's biggest event, the Flambeau Parade. We'll have a recap. All right, a lot going on this morning. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday with us. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday, April 10th. And we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit, but first we want to update you on that massive brush fire burning just north of San Antonio in Camp Bullis. So now to that continuing coverage of that massive fire. This is video from Sky 12 last night flying over Camp Bullis. Officials at JBSA say the fire has grown to more than 4,000 acres. Evacuations are in effect. The massive brush fire continues to tear through the demolition range area at JBSA Camp Bullis. We know that if families evacuated, there was shelter opened up at Spring Branch Middle School. JBSA says that their fire departments from Camp Bullis, Fort Sam Houston, Lackland, Randolph, San Antonio Fire Department, a Leon Creek Fire Department, and many others all responded to the call. But luckily, no injuries have been reported. We uh, did have students training in the area. They have all been accounted for and evacuated back to safe areas on Camp Bullis. Now, officials with JPSA saying the fire is only about 40% contained this morning. And this is a story we're following all throughout the morning. Uh, I know our Jonathan Cotto has been speaking with some of the residents who are, you know, on that standby mm -hmm. or on the fence of whether to evacuate or not. That's right. It's a scary situation out there. Jonathan, what can you tell us? Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. That's right. Evacu uh, evacuations are happening, but it's important to mention that they are not mandatory. And I'm here with Christian Bove, who uh, received some of those push alerts as all this was unfolding yesterday afternoon at Camp Bolas. Good morning, Christian. Thank you for speaking with us. Yeah, good morning, Jonathan. That's correct. Uh, yesterday around four o'clock is when we really started to notice a smoke smell. I uh, saw the smoke plume. And in fact, we even had some ash falling here at our house. So it was a little bit concerning, obviously. Um, you know, Camp Bolas does from time to time do controlled burns, but we knew we were under a a burn ban, so it couldn't be that. Uh, drove down to the end of the road, and that's when I could see that the fire was coming from Camp Bullis. Uh, we're a pretty tight knit uh, neighborhood out here, so we've got an email chain that we, you know, share. We've got a Facebook group, and so everyone was kind of jumping on there trying to find out some information. Uh, luckily, my place of point employment, uh, USA, they send out notifications whenever there's uh, any type of danger to employees. So I received one of those notifications, just letting us know that they were monitoring it. Uh, at that point, it was about 100 acres, so I wasn't too concerned. Uh, we actually had to leave last night for a, a fiesta event and I ended up dropping my parent or my kids off uh, with my mother-in-law, went to the event, but obviously the whole time just checking my phone. Um, and that's when I saw it was growing, grew to about 1500 and then evacuation started to come in uh, voluntary, but we had some friends who live in the front part of the neighborhood closer to, to uh, Ralph Fair. Uh, and they were told that, uh, you know, get ready to evacuate in case you have to. Um, at this point, if you want to, you can head over to Spring Branch Middle School. And so at that point we realized we got to get home, get everything ready, get the dogs ready, um, pack some bags just in case we had to leave in a hurry. Uh, but it was definitely scary. Last night around one o'clock, drove to the end of the street. You could see the glow of the flames back in the distance. Goodness, what's that communication with now this morning? Now as uh, the, the, the fire continues to, to spread, there is some level of containment. Um, you're staying hunkered down. What's the communication like right now with neighbors? Sure, so everyone's kind of on edge. Obviously, it was a little bit of a relief this morning waking up and not seeing the huge tower of smoke right over our neighborhood. Um, obviously, that can change in a hurry with winds. So everyone's just staying really close connected. Um, again, we still have those bags packed, ready to go. Um, and, and just keeping a close eye on it. You know, we're so grateful for the Bearable Verde Fire Department Department. They've been out literally all night on fire watch. Last night at one, like I mentioned, I saw a brush truck driving up the street. This morning at six, saw that same truck making, you know, circles through the neighborhood. So really grateful for them. And of course, all the firefighters that are fighting this place. 
Well, thank you so much, Christian. And I'm glad to hear that you guys are hunkered down and safe and everyone out here is safe. We're going to continue to have this conversation with Christian coming up in the next half hour. Back to you, Max and Sarah. Well, thank you, Jonathan. You know, one thing working in the firefighters advantage today will be the fact that the humidity is a little higher than it was yesterday. In fact, it's a lot higher than it was yesterday. Yesterday, dew points were in the 30s and 40s. Today, dew points are closer to 60 degrees. So that's going to help out firefighters uh, quite a bit, not having to deal with the dry air. But it is still going to be windy today. Winds are going to be from the south gusting up to 25 miles per hour. So if the smoke plume redevelops, these are the areas that would be most impacted by the smoke smoke plume. Smoke would be blowing away from San Antonio to the north around uh, Guadalupe River State Park and up toward Bergheim and into Kendall County near Kendalia. So it'll affect the southwestern corner of Comal County up into Kendall County. Again, if that smoke plume starts to billow up again. Uh, again, firefighters are going to be working hard on this fire. For the rest of us, we'll see it off in the distance if there is another smoke plume that develops today. But right now outside, quite a bit warmer than yesterday morning. We're starting off in the 60s and today we're going to be near 90 degrees. I'll have a look at your Sunday afternoon high temperature forecast coming up in a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Also in your top stories, one man dead this morning after being hit and killed by a pickup truck. Investigators tell us he was hit while trying to cross the street on the northwest side. So we know this happened around 2 a.m. on Days of Olive Road near Vance Jackson Road and I-10. Police say 64-year-old Ricky Ward walking in a crosswalk when a pickup truck made a left turn and hit him. Officers trying to determine who had the right of way, but as of now, that pickup truck driver not facing any charges. Well, it was a madhouse last night trying to get out of the downtown area after thousands and thousands of people packed the streets for Fie the Fiesta Flambeau Parade to see it finally up close and back in person. That's right. After two years of being canceled because of the pandemic, people were ready to be out and about in the mix, seeing Fiesta's, one of Fiesta's biggest events that is obviously unique to San Antonio and it attracts the eyes of the world. John Paul Barajas brings us the sights and the sounds. Hey! Everybody's having a good time here at the Fiesta Flambeau Parade. This is my first time and I really, really like it. I really enjoy it. I'm rocking and How rolling. much fun is this right now? It's the best. It's the best game. Oh, what's Fiesta without a couple cascarones? How long have you been coming to Fiesta? About five. Since I was five years old. All right, guys, we got the Southside High School Band coming up. You've heard it all the way down here. Everybody's pumped, having a good time. Get this. They expected and anticipated 750,000 people all along the parade line to take this in. And here's the kicker. Over a million viewers in San Antonio and worldwide throughout this broadcast. So you don't want to miss it. If you haven't been down here and haven't been watching live, don't worry. KSAT's got you covered. We'll have it online, all that good stuff. We're going to toss it back. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. Viva Fiesta. Great job out there, John Paul. And as you saw, Fiesta back and seemingly bigger than ever. We've obviously seen the large crowds. It filled NIO. So the full parades, and of course, all the medals. So how has everything gone from the Fiesta Commission's perspective? So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Steve Rosenauer, the executive director of the Fiesta Commission. Good morning, Steve. I'm sure you're exhausted. Um, <laughs> so far, it seems like uh, Fiesta back in person is, is a, a true success. It, it's great. Thank you for having me this morning. Now, we did have a late night or an early morning today, but um, it was great to get Fiesta back and really celebrating and just by the, the sights and sounds of the Flambeau Parade yesterday, you could definitely tell the people are ready to celebrate. Obviously, the last two years have been unique. So what did preparing for Fiesta 2022 look like? How did it differ from previous years? Well, I tell you, it was exciting and challenging. It was exciting in the fact that we were, based on the numbers, we were looking at a full Fiesta in 2022. So the organization, the Fiesta Commission was very happy to get back to a full Fiesta but challenging in the fact that we did have Fiesta in June and with the Fiesta Commission and many of our member organizations basically having to plan and implement the 21 Fiesta at the same time to begin the plans for 2022. So a lot of credit goes to the volunteers and staff, not only at the commission, but for all of our Fiesta member events 
for pulling off this this great feat. So definitely exciting and challenging plans, and it looks like everything was a success. All right, Steve, so there were some noticeable changes this year, like the touchless wristbands at Niosa, and then, of course, the parade route changes to the Battle of Flowers and Flambeau parades. I noticed the street was a lot more narrow, you know, going down Main versus a traditional Broadway. So are those changes permanent, or are they still being discussed for next year? Well, that's a great question. I think with the, the cashless system at some of the Fiesta events, one of the things that COVID provided was an opportunity for our organizations to maybe relook at their events and to try to implement some new strategies. Um, because the, the cashless system was done at several of our Fiesta events, each organization that, that had that will have to evaluate the success and the logistics to see if they want to maintain that. As far as the parade route, yeah, that was definitely a challenge this year. Uh, but the city with construction that was occurring on many of the streets, especially Broadway, we really had to work together. And, and it's just amazing how many logistics are involved in moving a parade route. But one of the things working with the city is we cannot confirm future years. So it's really kind of a year to year basis right right now based on the on the construction schedule for many of the streets. Um, but anyway, it was just a, a great feat and credit to Battle Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau for really working together to really establish this new route that, that appeared to be very successful. A lot of people, I walked around a couple of times this weekend during the parades and they really, the crowds and the, the participants in the in the parades seemed to really enjoy it. It was definitely more intimate. Yeah, and speaking of the crowds yeah. and all the people out there, I know it's still too early to tell exact numbers from your perspective, but you walked around, you saw people at the parade last night. How did it look? It, it, it looked awesome. The, the projection for the Flambeau Parade was 750,000 people. And walking the parade route a couple of times, it looked just every bit about that. So it was really, we attended a lot of events. Our, our Fiesta president, John Fristo, did a great job this year of really establishing the theme this year of resilience and the, the theme of the poster, the theme of Fiesta. We really, we really wanted to celebrate the resilient spirit of not only the Fiesta organizations, but the citizens of San Antonio, and we really captured that. Our events did a great job of capturing that resilient spirit. And the, the, the numbers, I think, are going to come in very positive just based on what we saw at all the events that we attended. Well, Steve, thank you so much for getting up early with us, I'm sure, after a very late, fun night. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning and recapping us on Fiesta. And for our viewers, you can see this full interview later this morning on KSAT.com. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. Time now, 812, 64 degrees out. All right, next, it's decades old lesson that never gets boring. We're taking you on a tour of Alamo Plaza. And take a live look out at the Alamo City. A lot going on this morning. Obviously, we are covering in depth the fire at Camp Bullis. 64 degrees now. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Well, welcome back. Fiesta not quite over. It's the final day of Fiesta, and there are a number of events still going on, like Fiesta de los Reyes and the Carnival. So right now, just take out your phone. You can hold up your phone's camera feature to that QR code you're seeing on your screen, and it'll take you directly to ksat.com, where you can find all of those lingering Fiesta events. All right, so today it is a lesson in Alamo history. We're talking about historical tours happening at 12 key sites along Alamo Plaza. All the locations highlighted are related to the 1836 Battle of the Alamo. It is an interactive event with historians dressed in period clothing. Describe what went down all those years ago. Organizers say it is the best way to get audiences engaged with history. Well, the meaning of this one is to remember there's two reasons for Fiesta historical reasons. One is to, is to remember the Alamo, the sacrifices made, and the other is to celebrate the victory, the battle of San Jacinto, that where we could declare our independence. All right, this is the 33rd year for the event. All right, so we're tracking a lot going on this morning. Obviously, Sarah Spivey has been at the forefront of all the smoke plume. Well, yes, and our, our smoke plume forecast, which I'll show you in a bit, uh, really is accurate when there's a big smoke plume that's visible. But what we've seen, correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, what, did, what is the report there, that there is a, a light smoke plume? There, it's moving to the west? The west towards Kendall County, but still pretty light. Uh, yeah. You can still smell the smoke quite a bit 
in uh, towards the Ralph Fair area. And, and that is what usually happens at night. We see the smoke plume dissipate, but today with those winds kicking up again from the south, we might be able to see the smoke plume uh, grow. And so I've got a look at that smoke plume forecast in a bit. For now, though, the if there is a smoke plume that grows, it will be visible from San Antonio, but the smoke will be impacting areas directly north of the fire. It's 64 degrees in San Antonio right now. We've got wispy cirrus clouds out there giving a million Milky hue to the sky this morning. Winds are from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. Looking outside at temperatures, it's quite a bit warmer than how we started off the day yesterday. Yesterday we were in the 40s. Now we're in the 60s. It's 64 in Pleasanton, 63 in New Braunfels, 63 in Del Rio, and a closer view here around uh, the San Antonio metro area. It's 62 in Bulverde, 63 in New Braunfels, 54 in Rio Medina, and 58 in Bandera. It's 63 in the Converse area. As I just mentioned, those winds are still going to be pretty good. Gusty. We're going to see wind gusts from the south at about 25 to 30 miles per hour. And here's a look at where that Camp Bullis fire is 40% contained. This is that smoke plume forecast that I was just mentioning. If a smoke a smoke can end up billowing from this fire, it's going to impact areas directly north of the fire today near Guadalupe River State uh, Park, all the way up toward Bergheim and even into Kendalia into Kendall County. And then winds are going to be from the south southeast, so it'll take us slightly western turn into Bear County. Uh, pardon me, pardon me, into Kendall County near uh, in between Sisterdale and Kendalia and perhaps the smoke could reach as far north as Fredericksburg. Those are the areas that would be directly impacted by a smoke plume. But here in San Antonio, many areas would just see the smoke plume visible there on the horizon. Otherwise, it's going to be a warm day and a windy day. We're going to see some more clouds in the afternoon uh, from some high thin cirrus clouds, but generally it's not going to be enough to shield us from the sun, so it's going to get hot. It'll be up to 90 in New Braunfels, 94 in Hondo. Notice how much more hot it is going to be to the west. 97 in Del Rio, 99 in Catula, and 99 in Laredo. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Again, we're going to see those clouds increase after lunch. It'll be 80 degrees around lunch. Into the afternoon, temperatures are going to top off near 90, so it is going to be a hot one. And, and we'll be looking at south winds at about uh, 15 miles per hour. That's sustained, but we'll see gusts of up to about 25 to 30. Now, later tonight, there is an off chance for an isolated shower, but the chance for rain is only 10%. Speaking of low rain chances, we're going to carry low rain chances Monday and Tuesday, only a 20 to 30% chance for isolated storms. But if storms develop, and again, that's a big if, they could become severe. So we're going to watch that carefully. But the biggest takeaway here is that in spite of the chance for isolated storms Monday and Tuesday, it is not going to amount to much and not help us out as far as the drought goes, is concerned. Maybe up to a quarter of an inch of rain for areas north of New Braunfels. But here in San Antonio, it's not looking good for us, and it's not looking good for all of South Central Texas as far as the drought is concerned. Because after that isolated shower or storm, Monday and Tuesday. It's going to be a fairly dry and hot week. Temperatures are going to be close to 90 degrees through Wednesday and then closer to 85 through the latter half of the week. But all in all, a pretty, uh, pretty warm and dry forecast for us. But we'll keep our eye on Monday and Tuesday because again, if storms develop, they could become severe. Otherwise, it's going to be a hot day today and windy with those winds from the south. We're going to continue to keep you updated throughout the morning. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 821, 64 degrees out. We'll be right back. All right, for all those that are trying to keep their Instagram pages fresh with content, <laughs> we have some sad news out of West Texas. This is near outside of Marathon, near Marfa. The tiny Bucky's display, well, it's gone. That's according to Texas Monthly. The art installment sparked excitement on social media a week ago when it popped up. Despite the bright yellow beaver logo, the little brick building isn't actually a Bucky's gas station at all. It's, of course, an art exhibit, the artist who has chosen to remain anonymous told Texas Monthly, quote, I assume the shift to e-commerce and higher gas prices probably forced it to close, end quote. All right, time now, just about 826, 64 degrees, a lot to come on GMSA. Still to come, more than 200 disabled athletes in San Antonio taking part in a regional competition that's inspiring everyone to put everything into accomplishing goals. And 
We've obviously been covering the Camp Bolas fire, but just ahead, arson investigators on the scene of a fire this morning near downtown. We're going to have the latest from investigators. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Acosta. It's Sunday, April 10th. Happy Palm Sunday. We have a lot of news this morning as we update you on that brush fire burning out of Camp Bullis. And Sarah, I know you've been keeping a close eye on that smoke plume. Yeah, that's right. If a smoke plume can get going again today, it'll impact areas directly north of that fire. Now outside right now in San Antonio, so look at the airport. You can see some height and cirrus clouds there that have temporarily moved in. They're going to be moving on out of here too. And so it'll be a mostly sunny morning for us. 64 degrees southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. Hey, look at the dew point. Dew points are up quite a bit. Yesterday dew points were in the 30s and today dew points are closer to 60 degrees. That is a 25 degree degree dew point change an increase in moisture. Now that fire that's ongoing in Camp Bullis, the firefighters are going to be working on that today. The fact that it's not as dry as yesterday is going to help those firefighters. However, it is still going to be windy. And as you know, yesterday, this was a common sight all across San Antonio, seeing that uh, plume of smoke from that Camp Bullis fire. If that plume can get going again, it's going to impact areas directly to the north of the fire, and that's because winds will be from the south today. So smoke will blow away from San Antonio, but areas around Guadalupe River State Park up toward Bergheim and Candelia, mainly in the southwestern corner of Ke uh, Comal County and in Kendall County, those areas will be most impacted by a smoke plume uh, if one can get going and even as far north as uh, Fredericksburg could be impacted by that. Otherwise, today is going to be a warm one. We're going to be close to 90 degrees in San Antonio for the high temperature a hot forecast for us today with a small chance for isolated storms in the forecast. I'll have a look ahead in a few moments. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Now to continuing coverage of that massive fire that Sarah's talking about burning just north of Bear County. This is video from Sky 12 last night flying over Camp Bullis. So officials at JBSA says the fire has grown to more than 4,000 acres. The massive brush fire continues to tear through the demolition range area on JBSA Camp Bullis. We know families who wanted to evacuate could have found shelter at Spring Branch Middle School. JBSA says their fire departments from Camp Bullis, Fort Sam Houston, Lackland, Randolph, as well as the San Antonio Fire Department, a Leon Creek Fire Department, and other surrounding departments all responding to the calls. And so far, no injuries have been reported. We uh, did have students training in the area. They have all been accounted for and evacuated back to safe areas on Camp Bullis. So officials with JBSA saying the fire is only about 40% contained. That is the information we have updated uh, as of early this morning. And Jonathan Cotto live in that area talking to neighbors who have gone through the last 24 hours. And Jonathan is live at the Bulverde Fair Oaks area to give our viewers a indication of where he is from the it's off of Hidden Oaks area off of West Almond Road and off of Blanco Road. Jonathan, um, earlier we spoke with you not really seeing smoke in that area at this time. That's right. It appears the winds have shifted, so we're not seeing that smoke directly from where we're located right now, and we're just north of Camp Bullis right now. But it's important to mention that that fire is still under investigation, and as Max mentioned, a number of fire departments assisting to get that fire under control. With me, Christian Bove, who was first alerted yesterday afternoon. Uh, Christian, talk to us a little bit about the importance. We know um, the push alert came through. You were notified of possible evacuations or the possibility of evacuating. What crossed your mind at that moment? Yeah, you know, it's obviously very scary when something like that is happening so close to you. You know, we were watching the uh, Medina Lake fire a couple weeks ago and just thinking, you know, so thankful it wasn't us. And, you know, one week later and here we are. So, um, you know, we, the whole neighborhood stayed really close connected throughout the day yesterday. Uh, we have some friends that live up to the front portion of the neighborhood, which is uh, the area that was really at most risk. And they're the ones that were being told to get ready to evacuate. And they had voluntary evacuations underway. So um, all night just, you know, couldn't get much sleep. Just just keeping a close eye on it. Uh, it did help knowing that we had the firefighters in the area. You know, there was emergency vehicles all throughout the neighborhood. Um, you know, our 
our kids luckily were already at my mother-in-law's for the night and so it was a tough decision you know whether we go get them bring them back home or leave them there and we ultimately decided that was the best place for them uh, you know a little tough on my daughter you know when we facetimed her last night she was crying and worried about uh, mom and dad but uh, my wife's on her way to go pick them up this morning uh, obviously a huge relief not seeing that huge cloud of smoke this morning uh, but with 25 mile per hour winds later today um, you know we just hope that firefighters continue to get a hold of the fire now, Christian, oftentimes when these incidents happen, there's always something that can be learned here. The importance of being just in contact and connection with your community. In this case, a Facebook page where you were able to communicate the alert uh, with everyone else who perhaps uh, would have not been notified. Yeah, absolutely. So it's one of those things where a lot of neighborhoods may not be as prepared. Luckily, this is a pretty close knit street and we've got a Facebook group. We've got an email chain. And so literally since about three or four yesterday, everyone's been communicating with each other. Uh, luckily, my place of employment, USA, sends out alerts and they monitor any types of threats to employees. So that's the alert that I received. I was able to share with our neighbors uh, just to keep everyone up to date, you know, whether we have to evacuate, whether we should shelter in place. Uh, and most importantly, just have stuff ready to go. You know, we had to come home, get a go bag ready. Um, important financial documents, some, you know, uh, old pictures that wouldn't be able to be replaced, that sort of thing, and loaded up in the truck just in case, you know, we got a call at three in the morning that we had to get out of here. Thank you so much, Christian, for speaking with us this morning. There you have it, Max and Sarah, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, a building closer here to downtown, a total loss after a fire breaks out early this morning. This is what we know right now. San Antonio firefighters tell us they were called out to this structure on Calabria and Colorado streets. They say the entire building up in flames when crews arrived. Uh, they were immediately able to work on the fire, keep it from spreading to neighboring buildings. We are told the building is vacant. The investigation underway, trying to figure out how exactly this started, but at last check, no injuries reported. All right, the 11th annual Texas Regional Games continues today with the final day of competition. Roughly 250 athletes with various physical disabilities and visual impairments from across the state and across a few surrounding states all competing in nine sports. And as our Lee Waldman reports, the goals of each individual athlete may vary. The mission of the games are to inspire. Yep. Representation matters. Um, I know that I didn't get to meet other kids with disabilities until I went to camps like this. That's huge. Dana Mathewson is no stranger to competition. The two-time Paralympic tennis player has represented Team USA in Tokyo and in Rio. Today, she was in San Antonio. It means a lot that I get to come back now as a coach and get to kind of teach people and see little kids get excited the same way I did. This weekend, Matthew Sinn and other coaches and volunteers took part in the Texas Regional Games presented by the Hartford. <laughs> Athletes with different physical abilities competed in sports like tennis, ergon cycling, track and field at the Morgan's Wonderland Park, Morgan's Wonderland Sport, Star Soccer Complex, and Hero Stadium. It's a communication for them to come and compete. Uh, and show what they've been worried, training so hard to do. A lot of them, some of our wounded service members, it's, a, it's really a part of their rehab. The scale of competition is impressive. Only a handful of these multi-sport competitions are held in the state. We are part of the Move United Competition strong. Series, and that series in, serves the whole way. United States and has over 10, almost 15 competitions. While that number is small, the impact it has on the competing athletes' lives is great. Having a disability doesn't limit you the way that I think a lot of people assume when you see someone in a wheelchair um, it raises equity awareness there's so many good things that come out of it lee waldman case at 12 news now some of the athletes are at the games preparing to qualify for the 2022 uil state track and field championships others hoping to qualify for the paralympics the games continue this morning with competition and track everything wraps up at 3 p.m in your morning headlines, the sports world in shock after the death of Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Dwayne Haskins. Authorities say Haskins was hit and killed by a dump truck in southern Florida. Fans paying respect to the former Ohio State quarterback at Memorial or at a memorial on the Ohio State campus. His former NFL teams, the Steelers and Washington Commanders, releasing statements extending their condolences. Haskins, a first round draft choice back in 2019, he was only 24 years old. 
A massive fire destroys a Home Depot in California. So check out this video. Firefighters in San Jose battled this massive five alarm fire yesterday. You can see the intense smoke. It reportedly could be seen from miles away and a nearby pet hospital had to be evacuated. There's no word on what caused this fire, but the home improvement store is packed, of course, with wood, paints and other combustibles. Right now we have we have reports that no one has been injured. All right, today, Palm Sunday, Pope Francis holding mass for the first time since the pandemic in St. Peter's Square. The square filled with mass goers and decorated with a giant palm plants and other greenery extending towards the platform where the main altar located. A Palm Sunday marks the beginning of a holy week leading up to Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Time now just about 840, 66 degrees out. Max, the Spurs, they just couldn't pull it off last night. I will say some injuries, the respiratory infection with uh, with DeJounte, but cautious optimism. No matter what we were in the postseason, it's just where we're going to host a playing game. We have the answer that and highlights coming up. All right, it's 66 degrees at 840 this morning. Sarah Spivey keeping a close eye on that smoke coming out of that fire at Camp Bullis. She'll have the latest on that and an update to your forecast. Putin's war, the atrocities, the unthinkable. Could it get even worse? Now as Russia digs in, fears grow. What more can the world do? Sunday, breaking new reports. Plus, D.C.'s COVID storm. What does it mean for you? Sunday on ABC's This Week. Good morning and welcome back. Obviously, a lot going on this morning. 844, 66 checking. degrees. I, I know, Sarah. We know you're hard at work. You, you've been yeah. on top of this updating uh, for that Camp Bullis fire, and I know that's what you are doing right now. Um, you're really watching the, the wind conditions, and you said today a little it's better. There's a little more humidity in the air for those firefighters. That's such a great point. Yeah, the humidity is about 25 degrees warmer, the dew point is, than it was yesterday. And so that's going to help firefighters as they try to battle this flower, uh, this fire. But the thing is, is that the winds are still gusting from the south up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. So we'll be looking at uh, some cirrus clouds out there right now. but. Things will clear up nicely for us a little bit later. 64 degrees outside right now with southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. Uh, temperatures are uh, uh, quite a bit warmer too than yesterday. We started off in the 40s and now we're in the 60s. 63 in New Braunfels, 61 in Kerrville, 58 in Hondo, and 61 in Uvalde. Let's take a closer look around San Antonio. It's 63 in Bulverde, 67 in Stinson, and 64 in Castroville. Now, while that smoke plume from that fire is going to be visible in San Antonio, it's mainly just going to be a windy and warm day around the Alamo City. Potential wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour possible today as winds will be from the south. And so I want to take a moment here and look at that smoke plume. That smoke plume will be impacting areas directly north of the fire in southwestern Comal County. We'll be looking at uh, that smoke plume moving into Kendall County too, closer to Kendalia, and then across parts of Kendall County out towards Sisterdale. That's a possibility as well. And if the smoke plume uh, grows significantly high, it could reach all the way, all the way up to. Uh, Fredericksburg. Now looking at the future cast, we will see an increase of clouds today into the afternoon. So expect partly cloudy skies and temperatures will be on the hot side. It'll be close to 90 degrees in San Antonio, 90 in New Braunfels, 94 in Castroville, 94 in Hondo and 95 in Sabinal. So a very hot day, even hotter out toward uh, parts uh, of our western viewing area, close to 100 in Del Rio. Now looking at the case at 12 hour forecast, we're going to be close to 80 degrees by noon. So if you're planning a Sunday brunch. Just know that outside it's going to be very warm. And then looking into the later afternoon hours near 90 for the high temperature this afternoon. It's going to be a mild evening with temperatures in the 70s and an off chance for a stray shower, but really only a 10% chance. Speaking of those small rain chances, there is a chance for storms Monday and Tuesday, but the chance for storms is only 20 to 30%. So isolated is the key word there. And if we do get a storm, it could become severe. The 
atmosphere, the ingredients are there, just putting them together is going to be a bit difficult tomorrow. So 20 to 30 percent chance on Monday and Tuesday. And just to really emphasize that this is not going to be a drought buster, we only have a, a maybe about a tenth of an inch of rain possible, especially for areas along and east of 281. But that is not going to help us out with the drought by any means. So looking ahead to the seven day forecast, windy today and warm near 90 degrees for the high temperature. An isolated shower storm is possible on Monday and Tuesday could be severe. Otherwise, it's going to be dry and warm. We'll be looking at highs near 90 through Wednesday, 85 Thursday and Friday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 847, 66 degrees out. Hey, Jonathan Cotto, he's been a busy guy this morning covering all this breaking news, but we wanted to give him a quick shout out. Happy birthday, Jonathan. We love having you on our morning show. And also, Jonathan is a veteran mm -hmm. of the Navy. Um, we, we thank you for your service and you're just Really, honestly, Jonathan is the <laughs> nicest person you'll ever meet. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jonathan. Thank you for great coverage on your birthday, dark and early. All right. We appreciate Jonathan, but it was fan appreciation night at the AT&T Center with the Spurs hosting the Warriors. Let's run the highlights. First quarter. Here we go. Daps and love must be love. There we go. Josh Primo. Rook. Watch out because boom, Josh Richardson, step back three, Spurs lead 10-4, and we have liftoff, boom. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, creating his own shot and a dunk. The Spurs regain the lead in 19-18, closing seconds. Walker shoots and misses, but a putback slam. Spurs trail just two after one. Second frame, Warriors, Jonathan Kaminga, a perfect pass. Gary Payton, the second for the layup. Dubs lead 43-34. Golden State outscoring the Spurs by eight in the second, and they led 54-44 at half. So let's go to the second half. Early third quarter, Spurs down 15. Jones driving baseline. Look at that. Fancy footwork up and under. Avoiding Draymond Green for the sweet reverse layup. Spurs first points of the quarters. Closing seconds, 19-year-old Josh Primo. A huge three to beat the buzzer. Spurs down at 78-71. Let's go to the fourth. Trailing by as many as 14. Primo again. Boom. Good for three. Five-point game off a Draymond Green turnover. Big pass, Primo, again. Little finger roll layup. Spurs only down two, 88-86. Silver and Black fought back, but they came up just a little bit short. Here's the final from the AT&T Center, the final home game of the season. Warriors 100, Spurs 94. With the loss, Silver and Black officially the 10th seed in the West. I think we're down two, and what, two minutes left, a minute left, you know. Um, and it was great to see uh, Primo do his thing with, the, with his confidence, making tough shots, getting to the lane. It's about the experience, and um, I think this game specifically was one of those moments that you can learn a lot from it. And we've learned the Spurs of the 10 seed. So Silver and Black have a chance to end the regular season on a high note, taking on Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavs today. It is a road game for the Spurs, tip-off set for 8.30. This go, evening. Go Spurs go. Go Spurs go. KSAT Sports teams will have all of the highlights from this game and so much more tonight on the Instant Replay. You can catch them at 11 o'clock right after the night beat. Go Spurs go. Go Spurs go. <laughs> Thank Time you. 850, 66 degrees out. All right. Parenting is hard. Balancing the do's and don'ts of parenting so you can raise well-rounded children. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you about toxic parenting mistakes to avoid. Before you go, we just want to recap a massive brush fire on JBSA Camp Bullis continues to burn this morning. Evacuations are in effect, but they are not mandatory. So according to Joint Base San Antonio, the fire has spanned over an estimated 4,000 acres. That's as of around 5 o'clock this morning. And it also 40% contained that fire initially started around 2.30 yesterday. Officials say it sparked on the training range. Now, we have reached out to several officials with JBSA. We have not been able to get a hold of them as of 8 o'clock this morning to give you another update. We've reached out to other area fire departments. We are still waiting on an official update this morning. So just stay with us here on air and online as of that information comes into our newsroom.
Thanks, Sarah. And again, if that smoke plume uh, redevelops today, it'll impact areas directly to the north of the fire. So in Comal and in Kendall County. Otherwise, it's going to be a warm day here in San Antonio. 66 degrees. Southeast winds are already breezy at 10 miles per hour. We're going to see wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. It's 66 in San Antonio, 63 in Converse, 69 already in New Braunfels, 65 in Canyon Lake, and 57 in Rio Medina. Today is going to be a warm one. 90 for the high. We'll be at 80 at noon and 90 for the afternoon high temperature. We're going to see a mixture of sun and clouds today. South winds gusting up to about 25 miles per hour. There's an off chance for an isolated shower tonight, but uh, really better rain chances, uh, especially on Tuesday, but even better rain chances are not that great. Only 20 to 30% chance for isolated storms on Monday and Tuesday. If those storms develop, they could become severe, but they are not going to help us out when it comes to the drought. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. As we've said, we're going to have the latest on the brush fire throughout the morning and throughout the day here on air and online.